Oh no, my lighting is not going to be as good as I thought here. But I wanted to do it here, so I'm going to keep just going to go with it. Happy Thursday, Facebook. I am super excited, nervous, happy, full of emotions to be coming here to you guys tonight. Um, this is usually the night where I might have to fix these blinds real quick. Or remove my computer, maybe that'll help. Okay. So this is usually the night where I go on live and I answer all of the questions that you guys send me over the week and talk to you guys about that. But there's been something on my heart this week that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I get a lot of questions from people asking me about how I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And I usually give the same answers of how I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, but there's a very big part of that story that has been missing and there's a very big um, transformation that has happened over the past year that I just wasn't ready to share yet. And so, um, like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna talk really fast, I don't know if I'm gonna say any cuss words, so if there's any kids around, you might wanna like put your headphones on. Um, I don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth. I have some like, things I wrote down over here so that I could look at and bring me back to my center. Um, but this is probably one of the hardest things I have to, I've ever had to do, ever had to share. So if you guys have any negative comments, please keep them to yourself. Um, as I was getting ready for this live video, I like was in my room, I had the music going that I loved and just remembering the reasons why I'm coming on here live to share this with you guys. And I looked over and I have these decks of cards that I have not, they're probably upside down, that I have not picked up in forever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have five minutes and like I'm freaking out. Um, I'm gonna pick two cards. So before I share my story, um, just hang tight with me. I'm gonna share with you guys the two cards that I picked. Um, I didn't look at them. I just held the decks, I shuffled them, I felt which ones were speaking to me and I pulled them. And the first card that I picked, it said is, um, this one was from the Power of Thought cards and it says, uh, as I say yes to life, life says yes to me. Um, life mirrors my my every thought as I keep my thoughts p positive. Life brings to me only good experiences. And like as soon as I pulled that, I was like, holy shit, like obviously I'm doing the right thing. Like I've been seeing signs all day long that sharing this story is the right thing for me. Okay, and then the next one I picked was from the Archangel cards. And you guys, I haven't done, like, I don't know all about these and stuff. I'm very new to these cards. But this is the Arch, uh, uh, Archangel's Oracle cards. And the one that I pulled, this is fucking crazy, you guys. Like I said, if you guys have kids, you might want to put earphones in. Um, and I probably won't be looking at the comments until I'm done telling my story. So the, the card I picked was, this was the card I picked. Um, it says, Overcoming Difficulties, Archangel... Um, Jeremiah, I probably saying that the, like butchering it, but the worst is now behind you and you're cementing any previous challenges. So I know that I am in the right spot and I'm here to tell a story that, uh, tell a story that needs to be heard. So like I said, I've thought long and hard about sharing this story a year ago. There's no way in hell I'd be ever, um, jumping on live and talking about this, but, um, you know, I, I was thinking about like, who's going to see this? There's people in my community. There's probably people that, you know, moms of kids that go to my kids' school. There's, you know, what are people going to think of me? Am I going to lose all my following? All of this stuff is going through my head. And then I thought, you know what? If somebody would have done this last year at this time, like I would have died to see this. I would have died to hear this story. And so there are really two reasons that I am, am going live and I'm sharing this story for you guys. I'm like, like the sun is really going to like kill me in my mood of where I wanted to be in this. So bear with me if I'm going to be moving around. But um, two reasons. Number one is because I know that there is somebody out there struggling that needs to hear this story that was just like me that um, I might get emotional, you guys. Ugh, I'm not an emotional person. <laughs> But it was struggling like me and needed to hear this because they needed some hope in their life. And so I hope if I touch one person tonight, then my job is done and doing this live video and getting freaked the fuck out before I did it um, was all worth it. 
And the second reason is because I need to be able to set myself free. I need to be able to free myself from the past two years. And um, it's kind of very <laughs> crazy that I'm doing this tonight. I didn't really plan on doing this tonight. I actually planned on doing this video um, on Sunday, which would have been um, 365 days since I took an Adderall. Um, but I didn't because I wasn't ready. Like I needed some days to process. I needed some days to think about the whole year and the whole transformation that I had made. Um, but the fact that this morning I woke up and I said, today's the day I've been talking about it all week. I'm doing it today. And of course I look at the calendar and tomorrow is a full moon. If you guys know me and you've been following me, I'm obsessed with the full moon and it is a perfect, perfect, perfect time just to release all of this. So stay tuned. Um, if you guys would give me some thumbs up, some love, some whatever, I would appreciate that. I probably will not be looking at the comments like I said until um, I am done telling my story. So I'm going to share one thing and then I'm going to get right into it. So I'm going to fast forward way, 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 way back um, to when I had my first son. Okay, not way back, but like six years ago, okay? Um, I had my first son. You guys have heard the story before. I wasn't comfortable with myself when um, I got home. I had a lot of anxiety and stress about my body image, and I just could not lose the weight. I couldn't figure it out. Like I went to um, a diet place and, and tried to lose the weight there, and they actually took my blood, and they told me, well, your thyroid is off, so you need to go see your doctor. So I went and saw my doctor, and I went and saw a doctor a couple times, and um, my thyroid was low, which is, is sometimes normal after you have a baby. Um, but the endocrinologist I was seeing, she just was not very, I don't know, she wasn't very helpful, and she wanted to put me on meds. And all I knew was that if I went on meds, I had to be on meds for the rest of my life. And I'm like, no, thank you. Like, I'll figure this out. You know, it is, I, I don't want to do that. So... What I did was I just focused on myself. I, um, I was, we were going through hard times financially at that time. So the one thing that I could do was focus on me, focus on losing that weight, getting it down. And that's about the time that I was introduced to Shakeology and the home workouts. So I started doing those. I lost all of the baby weight. I felt really good. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to my doctor and I want to go get a, a blood panel done just to see where my levels are at as far as my thyroid went. And so I went to my normal doctor. He did the, the panel. Everything was good. All right, fine. Life went on. Um, two years later, I got pregnant again. I had my son, had no problems, had no problems losing the weight. Uh, everything was great. Um, and then in 2014, I started training for a half marathon. And I started training in the summer, which I live in Arizona. That's like the, the dumbest idea ever, right? So I started training for that, and at the same time, this is when my coaching business started exploding. It was about three years after that. Um, I really was picking up momentum. My team was building. We went from like zero to to like 150 coaches by the end of that year, um, and it was just it was like the time of my life. Um, and at the same time, I I think it was turning 29. I don't know if I'm doing the math right. It doesn't matter. But I decided that if I hit this certain goal in my, my business, that I would go get extensions. So I went and got the extensions. Um, I ran my half marathon. Everything was good. And after my half marathon, things started going downhill. Um, my hair was falling out. I thought, oh my gosh, it's just the extensions. I need to take the extensions out. Like I took the extensions out and clumps and clumps and clumps and clumps of my hair were falling out. And like, this is crazy. Like I have no hair and, and I've had extensions before and this has not happened. Like, yeah, you feel like your hair is thinner after you take them out. But it was like, I, you could see I had bald spots and I blamed it on the extensions. I'm like, it was too heavy. The person that did it didn't know what they were doing. Um, and, and I just blamed it on that. So uh, like, two, like it was like two month period. And then all of a sudden I, I couldn't focus. Um, I got really, like, I had brain fog. Um, I started gaining a little bit of weight. Uh, it was just really hard for me to do day-to-day -day activities. I remember standing in the kitchen trying to um, unpack the dishwasher, like, like simple things. I was trying to unpack the dishwasher, and it took me three hours to unpack the dishwasher because I could not focus on one thing. 
And I, I worked from home at that time and I worked, I worked as a coach and I worked as, I helped my husband with his business. And I just remember him coming home and me crying saying, I can't do anything because I cannot focus on anything. Something is wrong. I need to go see a doctor. And um, at first, you know, he was like, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And then after a couple of weeks, he's like, okay, well, maybe you should go see a doctor and see what's going on because like this, this isn't okay. And your emotions are all over the place. Your hair is falling out. And it was just really crazy. So um, I went and saw my doctor, told her everything that was going on. And instead of listening to what I said, this is how I feel now, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know her side of the story. Um, you know, and saying, well, let's do a blood panel. Let's check out this. Let's see what's going on. She said, okay, so what do you, um, so clearly she gave me a form. She gave me a form and she said, okay, we're going to test you for ADD off of this form. There was like, I don't know, 15 questions or something. So I answered the questions and she said, well, you don't want to be labeled as, as ADD, do you? So why don't we just put you on um, a drug called phenamine, which I don't know if you guys know, but it's a weight loss drug. It's in the same class as Adderall, blah, blah, blah. I said, all right, well, I could probably lose, you know, I could probably lose 10 pounds anyways. So I'll do that. So she kind of just pushed me over to their, their little weight loss clinic that they had. And I did that for a couple months. I got in the best shape of my life. I wasn't eating. So, you know, I lost the weight. I felt great. And after that was over, I said, well, you know, I went to her and I said, well, I can't go to your weight loss clinic anymore um, because I'm not losing. There's no way I could, there's no way I could lose any more weight. Um, so what do you want me to do? And she said, well, you can. And, and, and at that time, like I, it gave me the energy I needed. It gave me the focus I needed. It gave me everything that I, that my life was crumbling down before. Like I felt great. Things were happening, but I couldn't keep going back to this weight loss clinic because I wouldn't have to lose any more weight. And she said, okay, well, we have a few options. You can either go on Adderall, um, the regular, or you can go on the extended release and everything. And, you know, she basically just said that, didn't test anything, didn't do anything, just asked me what I wanted, basically. And so at that time, um, I decided that I was going to go on the Adderall, not the extended release. I was like, just give me this because then I could, you know, control it and I can... I can, I can take it on my own and make sure that some days I don't take it and da 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 all, all that good stuff, right? So the first, I would say, four to five months were great. And um, after doing lots of research, this is called the honeymoon stage when it comes to Adderall. And um, I felt good. I was killing it in my business. My team was growing. We grew to 350 coaches in my team when we started from zero. Um, I was helping people change their lives. I was doing all this stuff. I was being a good mom. I was all of this stuff. And then there was, um, a time where we went on vacation and, um, I decided that the normal amount that was prescribed to me, cause I was taking half of it, of what I was prescribed that, Oh, I could just take another half. It'll be fine. Um, because I was tired. So when I said, well, I'll get back, I'll just go back to my normal, my normal schedule. Everything will be good. Well, that turned into a really, really big mess. And I started taking more than I was pre um, prescribed to probably for, I, I mean, I probably only took what I was prescribed for for a year or like six months, I would say. And then after that, I started taking more and more and more. And every time I would get my script, I would say, okay, I'm not going to do it this time or whatever. But I have, I have notebooks of where I wrote, wrote out like how many pills I could take because I wanted them for certain, certain time periods. I felt like this drug gave me life. I felt like it was the only way for me to speak. I felt like it was the only way for me to be around my friends. I felt like it was the only way for me to be around my family. But really, it did all of the exact opposite things. I thought it made me feel amazing. But let me tell you, it probably only made me feel amazing for the first hour. After that, it was all downhill. I, um, I ruined some friendships because of this. I wasn't present in my kid's life for a while because I was either high on Adderall and not sleeping for two weeks 
or I was sleeping for two weeks because I was coming down for Adderall, from Adderall. Um, I, I quit doing the workouts that I love. I quit drinking the super shake, you know, superfood shake, shakeology that I love. I, I quit, like I was not healthy at all. Um, I thought I could eat whatever I wanted to because I would eat two or three bites of it. Um, and I remember thinking that, oh, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, but there were so many different times where I was just dying inside and thinking that nobody knows what's going on around me. The only person that did know, and thank God for him, that he stuck out through all of this was my husband. He knew he knew exactly what was happening through this whole thing. Um, and so... It was about my 30th birthday. Uh, we went on a trip, and I, of course, I took all that or all with me, and I took all that or all before we got back, and I had a huge anxiety attack on our way back from the trip, and you know, everyone just thought that I was hungover and stuff. And I remember looking at my husband, telling him, "You like we were on an off-road razor riding thing, which I know some of you guys don't know what that is, but we were." in the backwoods, not anywhere close to a hospital. And I remember looking at him telling him, just like pull over, call 911, call a hospital. I'm going to have a heart attack and I need some, I need a helicopter to come pick me up, pick me up. Luckily I was, I calmed down and everything was okay. Um, but there were many times like that. Um, there were many times where I just, I just couldn't get out of bed because I, I, I was so sick from withdrawing from the Ad Adderall. Um, so fast forward to October of that, of, um, let's see, that would be 2015. Um, and I quit taking care of myself. So I quit taking birth control. That wasn't an issue anymore. My husband was good to go. We knew we weren't gonna have any more kids. And December of that year was really, really, really bad. And I kept thinking, nobody knows, nobody knows. And then my mom said something to me like, are you okay? And I was like, shit, everybody knows. And then I started hiding. I started hiding from people. I started not talking to my friends. Um, I thought that all I needed to do was work, work, work when I had my script. And, and when I didn't have my script, I didn't want to be around anybody because I didn't feel like a human. Um, and, and to be honest, like when I was working, I wasn't really working. I felt guilty for working because I was supposed to be out there helping people. I was supposed to be helping people change their lives. And I was not doing what I said I was doing. So, um, so fast forward to 2016, I'm trying to think, and I, I, I was just sick of, sick and tired of feeling sick and tired because the only time I felt good was when I first took an Adderall in the, in the first 30 or 40 minutes after that, I felt like shit all of the time. I would be awake for two weeks and I'd be asleep for two weeks and I was tired of it. So I told my husband, I was like, okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to tell her that um, I, and, and there was times where I would tell her that I, I, there was one time I told her I lost my script in the, the lake, like my pills, my purse, everything fell in the lake. Like she did that for me a couple times. She filled that, that up for me. No problems. Um, and then finally I said, you know what? We got back from um, a, another trip we had taken and I, and I took all the Adderall and I told her, I said, you know what? I think I want to switch up. I told her I left the, I told her I left my pills on the cruise ship and that I wanted to switch it up to doing the extended release Adderall because in my head I thought, well, if I could take one pill a day and not have to worry about cutting these pills up and taking half and whatever, then it'd be okay. Um, well, that worked for about three or four days, I think, and then I started taking double the dose of the extended release, and the same thing happened, same thing happened, and at that time is when I got um, introduced to the keto diet into Leanne Vogel, which I follow heavily. Um, her, her YouTube channel is Healthful Pursuit, and she has a blog, healthfulpursuit.com. She also has a book. Um, so the one thing that kept me going was the times in between where I was like withdrawing from from Adderall um, was my coaching community because, um, and see, I could talk about all the other stuff so easily, but this stuff is, is what's going to get me emotional. Um, so I've almost been a coach for six years. And when I became a coach, I was introduced to, um, you know, personal development and learning about myself and stuff. And so those times where I was just laying in bed for two weeks, all I would do was stick my nose into personal development. I would do personal development. I would read it. I would listen to it. Whatever it was, it was just constantly playing. As soon as I got my script back, it was, it was off. I was doing God only knows what. 
Um, but that's what kept me going. And so listening to these books and starting to learn about nutrition and starting to learn about um, a naturopathic way of medicine and stuff and thinking back to like at this point I was so sick and tired of it. I didn't want to go through it anymore. But I was like, okay, I don't want to wait. I don't want to gain the weight back. I don't want to gain the weight back. That was, that was like the thing in my head was like, you get off Adderall, you're going to freaking gain weight like that, sister. Like, what are you going to do? This is your business. Um, but at the same time, I was going between five and 15 pounds every two weeks because of the way I was not eating. And then I was like stuffing my face. So I'm like, something has to change. Um, and I, I was listening to all these books. I had jumped on the keto train. I started eating keto because I had eaten that way before and I knew that made me feel good. And, and then I started listening to her books and she t started talking about testing your thyroid and like a light bulb went off in my head and I, it was like, I looked at the past couple years and I looked at the times where I was losing my hair and I was, cr and I was crazy and I couldn't focus on anything. And I thought, oh my God, like I was clearly going through, now I see, I was clearly going through a Hashimoto's flare at that time. But my doctor didn't want anything, obviously, to test on that. She just wanted to write me a script and send me out the door. Um, so this, so 369 days ago, we were on a trip in Utah to visit my husband's family for the first time. And I remember I had like three pills left. And I remember being up all night one night looking up doctors and things on, on, um, on Facebook because I couldn't sleep because I took too much Adderall. And I found a doctor and she looked like she was my kind of person and whatever. And I told, I, I woke up my husband at three o'clock in the morning and said, I got to go see this doctor as soon as we get home. And the next day I took my last Adderall and on the way home, I was so sick. I was, I was so freaking sick. And I saw her two days later. Um, three days after that is when she, I, I told her everything that had happened, everything that was going on. I told her, um, you know, and she said, let's do a, a complete panel on you. My thyroid levels were so low. My antibodies were like skyrocketed and she basically helped me get past that. But I wouldn't have been able to get to that point of getting diagnosed with all of that and getting over that unless it had been for coaching. I, I truly believe this because I had people that supported me 100% that were there for me no matter what. They didn't Obviously, they didn't know what was going on, but uh, I'm sure that people saw, like, I was in and out of the business. I was not there supporting my clients like I wanted to be, and 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 then it just it just took, like, all I had to, you know, I had, I had a few friends reach out to me at that time and say, everything's going to be okay, because I started talking about my diagnosis with Hashimoto's and everything, but not everybody knew that that's what was that story is what led up to that. So after I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, it took a lot of personal development because I knew that my body needed to be fed. You guys, I'm a person that has like, like, I don't even like want to flex right now, but like you guys have seen my legs. Like I have a lot of muscle on my body and that's just genetics. I lost a ton, a ton of muscle because of Adderall <laughs> because I never ate. I just, I just didn't. And, and so I knew that my body needed to gain weight back and then it needed to like level out. And, and so last summer was probably the hardest time of my life. Um, because I, that day when we were in Utah, I said, this is the last one I'm done. And I, I have not looked back since then. I, I said, I will, I will heal myself. I will feel better. I started back with my workouts, feeling good, drinking my superfoods feeding myself nutritionally. I, um, I had, um, you know, I, I worked with two different doctors and I really, really, really took the time, um, to, to work on myself. And this past year I worked on, you know, self love, like getting rid of the scale. This is why I constantly talk about not tracking because it's a trigger for me. It's a trigger for me to want to go run to the doctor, get a script of Adderall. There's not, you know, I still think about it. It's not like it's totally gone. And, um, but it, it makes me want to go get that because it would be the quick fix to lose those, lose those pounds or look that way or whatever. But in the back of my head, I know that I have to be there for my kids and I have to be there for myself. 
like first and foremost, I have to be there for myself. Like there were so many times that I thought that I would just leave my kids and I wouldn't be here. But because of the support system that I had, because of like me just learning and, and educating myself on the recovery that I had or, you know, on, on recovering myself and healing my body from the inside out, I was able to get past that. And, and now I just really hope that every single client that comes to me that gets into my group or anything that I can teach them this self love first so that they never go down that path of, of any eating disorder or any type of a pill disorder or, you know, leaning towards some type of, um, you know, something that's going to help them lose weight quickly because that's not what it's about for me. If, if I never have abs <laughs> again, like that picture I posted earlier was probably the only closest picture I have for me having abs. Like it's okay because I have a life and I'm happy. Like I was dying inside. I went you know, I struggled with anxiety most of my life, and I went a couple years as being a coach without anxiety. But as soon as that Adderall came into my life, the anxiety went through the freaking roof. And I, I wasn't a good mom. I wasn't a good friend. I wasn't a good sister. I wasn't a good daughter. I wasn't a good husband. Like, I'm not a husband. I'm a wife. Um, but I wasn't any of those good things. The only thing I cared about in those two years was myself. I'm confused. Did you, okay, did you need the Adderall or were you addicted to it? Um, I went into the doctor and at the time I, I couldn't focus on anything. My life, like it took me three hours to, um, unload a dishwasher. It took, like, I couldn't focus on anything. I was so all over the place, but looking back on it, I was actually having a thyroid slash Hashimoto's complete flare, but my doctor didn't care to take the time to test for me. So she gave me, she prescribed me the Adderall and then eventually I got addicted to it. Okay, so, you know, it's all come for full circle. Um, I haven't had an Adderall in 369 days. I feel amazing. I've been able to lose the 20 pounds that I gained, like, overnight last summer. And I just want to help other people out there to, if, if they're struggling with this or, you know, even if, even if they're not struggling with the Adderall addiction, if you're just like, I can't seem to get on this health and fitness train. I can't seem to do this or whatever it is. Like that, this is what I want to help people with is not putting all of these rules and these restrictions and all of this stuff on us or worrying about all these body images and all of this stuff that comes with it or worrying about hustling so hard in your business that in, in the end you don't really get anything done. Like there is a way to work harder and not smarter. And there is a way where you can be healthy and it not be overwhelming because that's what I've done in the past year. I've built my business back up. Things are amazing. I've been helping so many women just start on their own health and fitness business. I've helped so many women start on their own health and fitness journey. And I think that I'm finally thankful for those two years that I went through and the things that I did. I'm not proud of them in any way, but they have taught me so many lessons that I feel that I can teach other people. And... I'm surprised I didn't cry more than I, 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 I thought I was definitely going to cry. So I'm going to really, 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 um, look through these comments cause I haven't really looked except for that last one. And actually I'm probably going to pull it up on my computer. So, um, I can hang out for a little bit longer if anybody wants to ask me any questions, since this is normally my ask Ashley segment, um, I'd be willing to answer any questions. Obviously I'm an open book at this point. Obviously everything's out there. <laughs> um, Let's see here. Okay, thank you for sharing. Christian and I are watching. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you guys all for watching. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you for just always being there. And I hope that this can touch somebody. I hope that it will help somebody if you, you know, if you are in the same boat I was in a year ago, like reach out, let's talk. Um, it's not about selling something. It's not about you buying Shakeology or Challenge Pack or anything like that. It's, it's just about helping you get to a better place and a better mindset in your life to where you can live a healthy and happy life. So I think with that, I'm going to end this. Um, 
I feel like I went, I did a lot better than I was going to like an hour ago. I texted my mom and my sister. I said I was going to puke, but I didn't puke. So <sighs> thank you all. I, I feel very free now and I feel um, grateful for all of you. So I hope you guys have a great Thursday night. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you soon.